The problem is totally economic. It is not economics, John. It's ethnic rivalries. The thing is, if they want to join the rest of Europe, they're going to have to get well, it under control. you cannot make these problems go away with the wave of a magic wand. Oh, yeah, but the whole thing... Helium Week in Review will not be seen tonight, so that we may bring you the following episode. With me, Pat Cashman, Tracy Conway, Bob Nelson, Bill Stanton, Nancy Guppy, Steve Wilson, and Ed Wyatt, and starring John Keister. And on tonight's show, we... Look, hurry up, would you? We need the studio just as soon as you're done here. For what? Our Wayne Newton telethon. Wayne Newton? Yeah, he's had some tough financial times. We're trying to help him out here. Yeah, but he makes millions a year, so your telethon sounds like bull doo-doo to me. Bull what? Never mind. What's wrong with a little telethon? It just sounds like horse parking. It sounds like horse what? Never mind, we got our own show to do. Okay, but be quick about it. All right. Thank you. Donkey shame. Donkey what? Never mind. Okay. And now, here he is. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Who am I? Why am I here? Uh, I'm glad to know I'm not the only one with that question running through my head all the time. Yes, there are a lot of catatonics in America. I think it's time we elected one president. Don't you agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catatonics. All the way. Anyway, anyway, it's an exciting night tonight. The first... I wish our Canadian neighbors good luck, and they're going to need it because they have to win five out of seven games because of the exchange rate. Did you know that? <laughs> Did you know that? They use different colored balls up that the number one team in the country might be decided at the, at the Apple Cup in Pullman. <laughs> Think about that. That'll, that'll be the biggest thing to hit that town since the John Deere convention. I'm telling you. And so today the biggest... But we're very proud of the Huskies. But everyone in Seattle is particularly proud this week because Fortune magazine named our town America's number one city to do business in. Which, well, we at all live were very proud, but we were... We were, we were kind of interested. We, want, we wanted to know just how Seattle made it to the top of the heap like that. So we called Fortune magazine, and they told us the reason Seattle was voted number one for business. For example, there's plenty of time to work out business plans while stuck on 520. <laughs> That's one. There's a cheap source of labor available from global benefits for oversized tires. <laughs> Here's an interesting idea. It really, it's not really that great, but Rod Chandler was handling the numbers. That's <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, a groaner. All right. There's huge corporate savings in Seattle on car washing. Wow. Wow. All right. Also, no chance of the Seattle Times investigating your shady business deals. I was worried there for a minute, though, weren't we? Yes, we were. They also said that uh, Seattle stays on top because of some of the innovative programs that keep employees together as a winning team. And we've got a great example right here. Trendsetters, the show about people on the cutting edge. The really hip, the cool people out there doing things that you'll never have the guts to do, even if you live to be a hundred. So you just sit there on your fat butt and watch the world go by on Trendsetters. Tonight on Trendsetters. In today's high stakes world of big business, America's winning companies are keeping their competitive edge with a bold new innovation Corporate Dodgeball. Yes, Corporate Dodgeball, a trend that is sweeping the nation. I love the sound it makes when it hits someone right in the head or like in the middle of the back. It's like, yes! It's so you know, the great thing about this game is that everybody can have a good time, and it really doesn't matter just because I'm the boss. I just like being one of the guys. Ow! Oh, that hurt! You, you, you clean out your desk! You're out of here! You, how do you like it? From the boardroom business. I think dodgeball has actually brought us together as a team and allowed us to focus on our goals. Plus, I hate Jenkins and accounting, and I nailed him today. Oh, boy, did I get Next week on Trendsetters, Lunch Break Leapfrog. <laughs> Oh, we have a really good show tonight. 
tonight, so stay with us. We'll be right back after this commercial. Promotional consideration for Almost Live provided by Ballard Computer in Seattle, Kirkland, and now open in Tacoma. And now, here are some suggestions for your late night viewing pleasure. At 12.30 on A&E, join the hippie gourmet as he provides helpful kitchen hints on cooking with dirt. At 1 o'clock, ESPN presents Baseball Bloopers, this week featuring bad hops to the groin. And at 2 o'clock on HBO, Barbara Hershey and Sally Kellerman star in Honey, I Blew Up My Lips. Stay up late and watch more TV. Would you like to be a more effective communicator? Able to speak with real confidence and command? Now you can. Here's the president of Speaking Dynamics Institute, Mr. Marvin Placidwheel. How are you? I hope you are doing very well and that everything about you is going along just extra marvelously. Did you notice what I just said? And the two of the Speaking Dynamics Institute. Now, a lot of television weathermen have come to us to learn how to speak and to point at the big map at the same time. And we also teach actors how to move while still being able to deliver their lines in a way that is powerful and dynamic and skillful. I mean skillful. And at Speaking Dynamics Institute, we will also teach you how to memorize things so that you can always appear to be spontaneous. With this valuable skill, you will appear to be spontaneous. By now, you probably would like to see a picture of the Institute than that. Enroll now at Speaking Dynamics Insta. Toot. Everybody is getting on my nerves. Everybody is stupider than me. Why won't you do things the way that I do? I am right and you are wrong. Me! Hello, and welcome to me. Well, before getting started, I have a quick comment for Hazel Seidelman. Hazel wrote to me last week and asked, and I quote, light and fluffy, unquote. <laughs> Hazel, I don't care if the cake floats up into the air and hovers for an hour. <laughs> Three eggs is the way I do it. Three eggs is the right way to do it. You're a stupid old woman, and you're wrong. <laughs> Okay, well, it's time now to meet my exciting, exciting guest. He's a world-renowned builder of model ships. Very exciting stuff. Please welcome Kevin McRae. Oh. Well, Kevin, it is just so nice to have you on the show. It's very nice to be here. Well, tell us about your current project. Oh, this is a one-of-a-kind, exact-scale replica mm -hmm. of a Spanish fighting galleon from the medieval period. Oh, my goodness. It's my pride and joy. It's just beautiful. And how long have you been working on it? Six months, eight oh, months? Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I have been working on this for 13 years. <laughs> 13 <sighs> years? What's the holdup, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, I... I design and hand carve each piece individually. Uh -huh. It's very painstaking uh, work. Very, very interesting. Uh -huh. Would you mind giving us a uh, demonstration of your technique? Oh. I think we'd like to see that. I think we would. Certainly. Certainly. Okay. I can do this sail first. You put okay. just a touch no, of no, glue there. No, no, no. You'll there. need more glue than that. You'll well, need no, more glue. Yeah, you, know, you know, ironically, though, the more glue you use, the harder it is to make it stick in place. <laughs> well, I've put together a few models in my day, and believe me, you need more glue. <laughs> I, I, I know it does look that way. It yes. is that way, Kevin. Put uh, on more glue. 
I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I really have to disagree with well, you on this. No, wonder it's taking you 13 years. You don't know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> they needed more glue. <laughs> you, you ruined it! Oh, it wouldn't be ruined now. If you'd done it my way to begin with. You're insane! Oh, poo. No. Well. 13 we're, years! We are, shh. We're out of time. So join me tomorrow and we'll learn the correct way to sharpen a knife and we'll get a demonstration on how to milk venom from a rattlesnake. So until then, everybody is getting on my nerves. Everybody is stupider than me. Why won't you do things the way that I do? I am right and you are wrong. Me! Studio amplification for Almost Live provided by American Music. And now, here are some suggestions for your late night viewing pleasure. At 12.30 on the Nashville Network, be sure to catch Tobacco Spitters Roundup. At 1 o'clock, CBC presents Hockey Night in Canada, followed by Hockey Forum, Hockey Tonight, and Wide World of Hockey. And at 2 o'clock, on MTV's Unplugged, the Black Crows try to remember the words to their... Right here, here's the non-empowered daddy. And next to him, Mommy the Enabler. Down here, the bulimic, overachieving firstborn. And the hyperactive, pyromaniac, youngest child. It's a super teaching tool, and it's a fun toy for the whole family to enjoy. Okay, next up, we want to show you this complete set of unbreakable flexible dinnerware. This stuff really helps you get your point across without hurting anybody. You just take one of these and you say, I don't like your stinking mashed potatoes, okay? I hate the food you fix. I hate it. And you haven't hurt anybody. <laughs> Next up here, for you closet alcoholics, take a look at these fine items. Isn't this nice? Wow. <laughs> And moving on to our next item now here on the Dysfunctional Family Shopping Network. Here's a wonderful gift for that depressed soul and teenager in your family. It's the Mopey Teen Runaway Bag. It's only $39.50, comes in designer colors, and includes all the essentials your teen is going to need to run away for two or three days. Now included are a pair of big clunky boots, clove cigarettes, CDs by Depeche Mode and The Cure, black hair dye, and a razor, a copy of Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar, and a packet of pre-written suicide notes. It's going to be these laying around so people can see them. Okay, let's go to the phones now. We understand uh, we've got a caller. Hi. Who's uh, this? That's Jason. Okay, Jason, now we understand that you have purchased the Mopey Teen Runaway bag. Right? Is that right? Yeah, I'm using it right now. It's great. Okay, now what's your favorite item from the bag, Jason? Well, I like them all, but but probably the hair dye and razor, because I um, gave myself a flat top and then dyed it jet black. That'll make my parents buy me that Jeep I want. Well, thank you, Jason. And we invite all of you there at home to stay tuned here to the Dysfunctional Family Shopping Network. We've got a lot of items left to show you, so if you're really messed up, don't mess with that dye. Welcome to the John Report. I'm John. Here's my report. Well, Seattle Mayor Norm Rice has started a new program called the Seattle Challenge, which encourages young people to meet and learn from local business leaders. Tacoma is considering a Tacoma Challenge, which would encourage kids to drop it and come out with their hands up. <laughs> In other Tacoma news, garbage collection has been suspended in that city due to a clerical workers' strike. So far, no one has... <laughs> new... New Boeing ads on TV stress that even though the Cold War is over, it's still a dangerous world. The ad goes on to say that the world can be made less dangerous by buying a whole bunch of new airplanes. <laughs> well, because of cutbacks in the U.S. Navy, Boeing employees have received stop work orders. A Boeing spokesman said, however, that giving that command wasn't really necessary. <laughs> A Russian space capsule containing messages from Boris Yeltsin to Westness, Western business leaders will, be, will land just off the coast of Washington at Thanksgiving. 
Yeltsin says this is the best they can do until they finally get a decent phone system over there. <laughs> At a recent press conference, outgoing Governor Booth Gardner said there'll be a state budget crisis in the coming months. When asked how it should be dealt with, he simply laughed, skipped in a circle, and shouted, Don't ask me! And that's so <laughs> little... Uh, a $50 million plan to upgrade the Coliseum would lower the floor 30 feet. Several members of the Sonics have complained about the plan, saying that would make the basket way too high to reach. <laughs> a, lone, a lone moose has been spotted wandering through area yards in Bellingham. Though the animal appears dazed and skittish, one resident notes he glimpsed the remnants of a mariner's uniform caught in the moose's antlers and heard it uh, mumbling giddily, I'm free, I'm free! <laughs> Finally, the best martini in town, the best martini in town contest was won last week by the Garden Court at the Four Seasons Hotel. When asked what made the Garden Court's martini so much better than all the other bars in town, a spokesperson... <laughs> Now, here are some suggestions for your late night viewing pleasure. At 1230 on PBS, Mr. Wizard shows kids how to blow up mailboxes. <laughs> One o'clock on USA, it's the World League of American Football. The sack. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you at home for inviting us into your homes. We always like that because they're so much nicer than any of ours. Not so, not yours? No, yours is better. Anyway, we thank, thank you for coming. Bye -bye. Promotional consideration for Almost Live provided by Pizzeria Pagliacci, featuring traditional and gourmet pizza by the slice. Pizzeria Pagliacci, rated Seattle's...